The underground utility community is growing faster than ever. You need to be prepared to get the job done and get it done safely. This video will help make you aware of potential hazards and learn best practices for operating and excavating properly on a micro trenching job site. It is not a substitute for any equipment operator's manual. If you need additional training on your equipment, contact your local ditch witch dealer. Before you use any ditch witch equipment, read and understand the operator's manual, which can be found on your machine or at ditchwitch.com. In addition to this video and the operator's manual, the safety section of the Ditch Witch website features a general equipment safety video and an extensive list of safety guidelines that we recommend you read and review frequently. The general equipment safety video covers proper personal protective equipment, preparing the job site for excavation, transporting equipment, emergency procedures, and general safety information for the job site. We recommend you view the general equipment safety video in combination with this video. Protect yourself by wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment for the job site. Cutting materials such as concrete, sand, or rock containing quartz may result in exposure to silica dust. Use dust control methods and appropriate breathing protection when exposed to silica dust. Follow all OSHA regulations. Micro trenching occurs on roadways and neighborhood streets. The work occurs over a long stretch of roadway. Therefore, traffic and pedestrian control will be needed. Follow local traffic control requirements. In the U.S., the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices is the accepted code. Contact local authorities concerning any permits, notifications, or planning that needs to take place prior to working. Know and follow all applicable state or city regulations. A successful job begins before you start working. Make sure everyone is on the same page and working together. Communication is key on micro-trenching job sites. Have a method of communication for the entire crew and traffic control crew. They always need to know the location of other crew members. Procedures should be in place regarding walking between equipment. For example, walking or standing between the trencher and the vacuum. If working in a residential area, notify homeowners of work that is about to begin. Locate all underground utilities before digging. In the U.S. or Canada, contact your local one call. Unless it is an emergency, you must give one call advance notice to allow time for utilities to be marked. Also, contact any utilities that do not participate in the one call service. In countries that do not participate in the one call service, contact all local utility companies to have underground utilities located. Once locates have been completed, verify the locates using soft excavation. Pothole any crossings at least to the depth of the proposed trench. A core drill attachment on a mini skid steer used in conjunction with a vacuum excavator can also be used to expose utilities and roadways. Know and follow any local regulations for road plates or coverings for open excavation. Fence off any pits that may need to be left open overnight. Protect any sewer drains with absorbent socks as needed or required. Secure the area where cuts for service lines will be made. Avoid cutting where there are existing cracks in the pavement. The best place to cut is on a joint or in a location that can avoid obstacles going to the house, such as a tree. Before making the service line cuts with your mini skid steer, know how the machine's controls work and make sure they operate properly. Debris may be thrown while using the micro trenching attachment. Keep everyone at least six feet away from the attachment and always wear safety glasses. Drive to starting point and move the micro trencher in line with the planned trench. Engage the parking brake and then lower the micro trencher until the blade is near the ground and level. Check that the blade is in line with the planned trench. Use the attachment drive control to start rotation. Increase engine speed to full throttle. Lower the micro trencher. As the blade enters the ground, use tilt and level controls to position attachment base flush against the ground. If equipped, use blade depth switch to slowly lower the blade to digging depth. If not equipped with a blade depth feature, 
the depth will need to be set prior to digging. Disengage the parking brake, then move the track drive controls to begin micro-trenching. Micro-trenching movement can be toward or away from you, depending on the attachment being used and the direction of the blade. Some attachments are pulled in reverse for the initial cut. Then, with the attachment still in the ground, attachment is unhooked and the equipment is moved to the other side to push the remainder of the cut. This allows for a continuous straight trench to be cut. Be sure blade is installed for the direction being used. The blade should be rotating in the direction the bits are cutting, toward the vacuum port. When trench is complete, move track drive controls to neutral. Move throttle to half open. Use blade depth switch to raise blade completely, if equipped. Stop blade rotation. Typically, mainline micro-trenching cuts occur in a roadway or at the edge of a roadway immediately adjacent to the curb and gutter. Ensure that you have the correct blade installed for the job site. The type of blade will depend on ground conditions. For more information on blade selection and blade and bit replacement, see the blade and bit replacement video on ditchwitch.com forward slash safe. Secure the micro-trenching path for the planned trenching section. Line the micro trencher up with the proposed path. Wear a seat belt anytime you are on the trencher. Set parking brake and then lower the micro trencher to just above the ground. If needed, adjust blade and spoils deflector to appropriate trench depth. If chutes are used, set the spoils deflector as close to the blade as possible. Always operate with the blade cover and the chutes or chute plates in place if equipped. Position the vacuum excavator and connect the vacuum hose to the micro trencher. Ensure there is adequate access to and from the trencher. If a vacuum excavator is not used, water spray may be needed to meet OSHA regulations on crystalline silica dust. Start the trencher and adjust throttle to low. Move attachment speed direction control to the desired speed. Increase engine speed to full throttle and slowly lower the micro trencher to full depth. If using a hydraulically adjustable blade, have the blade fully retracted prior to moving attachment speed direction control. Once the saw is flat on the ground, adjust the blade to desired depth. Keep everyone at least six feet away from the attachment. Micro trenching requires good contact between the micro trencher frame and the surface being cut. Use lift control, level control, and tilt to adjust the micro trencher to match job site conditions. Release parking brake and then move ground drive hand control to desired trenching speed. If working in sticky soil conditions, water spray with additive may be necessary. If a curved trench must be cut, release the swing lock. Rear steer may be used to assist with cutting a curved cut. For a cleaner cut and to help keep stress off the blade, slow down the ground drive. Flag utilities that may be a potential risk to help alert the trencher operator. Have a spotter ahead of the intended trench path to ensure any objects, such as plates over potholes, have been removed and to assist with the visibility of the vacuum hose. Everyone, including the spotter, must stay at least six feet away from the attachment. When trench is complete, adjust throttle to low. Raise the micro trencher. As blade clears the top of the trench, move attachment speed direction control to neutral. Some blades require changing the entire blade, while others require replacing the bits. It's recommended to inspect blade and bits for wear every 100 feet or when performance declines. If using a vacuum excavator for spoils removal, Ensure vacuum hoses are clear, vacuum filters are clean, and separator canister is empty prior to operation. Use the appropriate size of vacuum excavator for the size of micro trencher. Typically, a minimum of 1000 CFM is recommended with your micro trencher. Make sure the tow vehicle is rated for the weight of the equipment and spoils. If the vehicle is not large enough for the load or sloshing liquid, you can lose control of the vehicle. Know the GVWR of the truck or trailer 
and know the density of the material being excavated so that you avoid overloading the vehicle. See the operator's manual for allowable fill levels of various materials. After vacuum hose is connected to the trencher, operate vacuum unit at full speed for best results. Full vacuum flow to the micro trencher is necessary for best spoils removal. If the vacuum has stopped removing spoils, that may indicate a clogged hose or full tank. If a clogged hose cannot be cleared by manipulating the hose, shut down the micro trencher and vacuum excavator to correct it. Only empty the tank at approved sites. Check inside of trencher vacuum hoses periodically for any caked spoils. Follow manufacturer recommendations to clean the filters. Additional precautions may be required when maintaining the filter and emptying the tank, such as breathing protection or the use of water spray or other means to control dust. Follow all OSHA guidelines for crystalline silica dust. If not using a vacuum excavator, cap vacuum hose on trencher, remove chute plates, install spoils chutes. After the trench is cut, install the product in the trench. Be aware of possible pinch points on the reel trailer. Keep everyone away from the turning reel. Once product is installed, fill the trench with an approved concrete or grout. Ensure all controls operate freely on the machine being used and concrete mixer attachment is free from any debris before filling with concrete. Move the unit to the work location. Add either premixed concrete or mix concrete or grout in the attachment. Do not run mixing blades while adding material. Run engine at half throttle and mix until desired consistency. To release concrete or grout into trench, lower hopper into the trench to desired depth. Turn the vibrator motor on and continue to run the mixing blades. Open the tub door until the required flow to fill trench is reached. Move machine forward while discharging material into the trench. Time ground drive speed with material flow to fill the trench to desired depth. Close the tub door and turn off the vibrator when finished. Spray inside and outside of mixer tub with water to remove concrete residue. Turn off the mixing blades. Never reach into hopper with the machine running. Fill any potholes or open trenches. Clean up any debris in the roadway or sidewalk. After all work is complete, remove any traffic cones or signs. The most important component for safety on any job site is you, the equipment operator. It is your responsibility to make sure the equipment is ready to operate properly. Contact your local Ditch Witch dealership if you have any questions about operation, maintenance, or equipment use. We're here to help you get the job done safely, efficiently, and effectively. After all, we're in this together.